Okay, so in this video, I want to consider the exact same problem as we looked at in the previous video, except in the opposite direction. I want to begin with the first family being circles centered about the origin, and then from this find the given orthogonal family of curves, which we expect to be simply lines passing through the origin. And you might think, well, this is redundant. Well, yes and no, because there is something interesting in looking at the problem from the opposite direction. Again, we can look at the geometry and confirm that the exact same intuition holds. If your first family consists of circles centered about the origin, so you could have very small radius, larger radius, and so forth, and now we are asking for a family of curves where every curve here meets every curve here in a perpendicular fashion. It looks like, again, only lines passing through the origin will do the trick. And as we will show right now, the answer is yes. But what's interesting is that the first family of curves, we do not have y explicitly being a function of x. Of course, in this case, we could isolate y as two functions of x coming from plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Right? This is worth pointing out. If you isolate y, there are two possible functions of x. And then you can differentiate y with respect to x and then eliminate the dependence on the radius. But we can do better. And not only better, but in some cases, you may have a family of curves where it is impossible to isolate y as a function of x. And so this cheat may not be available. Well, the idea is, even though we do not see y explicitly as a function of x initially, we can still think of y being an implicit function of x. And if we do so, then the left-hand side is a function of x, so is the right-hand side although constant. And so both sides are functions of x, when again we think of y being an implicit function of x, so we can differentiate both sides with respect to x, and that of course is the idea of implicit differentiation. And we'll find our derivative dy over dx this way, instead of using this cheat, as again this is not always possible. Given the equation of a curve, we cannot always solve for y explicitly as a function of x. But now let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. As both sides are equal, they must have the same derivative with respect to x. Now here we have to be careful that we apply the chain rule properly. So I'll go slowly. So we have x squared and y squared, so the outer function is the power 2. So if we apply the chain rule, we differentiate the outside function, so we get here 2x. But that's coming from the derivative of the exponent 2 only by the chain rule times the derivative of the argument, which will be dx over dx. Plus the derivative of y squared, the square being the outside function, by the power rule we get 2y but there is still the y left over, so by the chain will we multiply what we have so far by the derivative of what's left over, that is of course dy over dx. This is trivial, r is a constant, so is r squared. The derivative of a constant is simply zero. Well, we can simplify it in two ways. You can multiply both sides by a half to cancel the two, and a half times zero is zero, and of course, dx over dx is simply 1. So the equation becomes quite simple. We get that x plus y dy over dx is equal to 0. We're trying to solve for the derivative of our curve, so dy over dx. Subtract x, divide by y, and you obtain that dy over dx is negative x divided by y. And so now for any given curve in the first family, if you take a point on it, given by the x and y coordinates, the derivative 
at this point, the slope of the tangent line is negative of the x-coordinate over the y-coordinate. So we have the derivative independently of the parameter r for the first family of curves. Well, what is therefore the derivative for the second family of curves, the orthogonal family of curves? Well, if you recall, it is simply negative 1 over the derivative of the first family, which is negative x over y. So we have for the second family negative 1 over negative x over y. If you simplify, the negatives cancel, and you're left with y over x. Once again, we have a separable differential equation. Divide by y, multiply by dx, and you're left with 1 over y dy equals 1 over x dx. Once again, a differential in y equals a differential in x, so we can integrate both sides. The integral of 1 over y is the ln of y in absolute value equals the integral of 1 over x is the ln of x in absolute value plus, of course, c. We want to solve for y if possible, sorry, explicitly as a function of x, so we can exponentiate both sides with the natural exponential. Here we can break up these two terms as e to the ln of x in absolute value times e to the c. If you go backwards, when you multiply the same base, you can combine by adding up the exponents, so ln of x plus c. Check. And now we can cancel the natural exponential with the natural logarithmic function. So on the left, we are left with the absolute value of y equals, I'll write this first, e to the c, times, cancelling e in the ln, the absolute value of x. But we can drop the absolute value, as all this function does is kill off a possible negative sign, and so y is plus or minus e to the c times x. Now, this looks rather unpleasant, but if you think about it, c is an arbitrary constant, therefore e to the c is an arbitrary positive constant, but we have here plus or minus e to the c. So this is yet another arbitrary constant, and of course we can just call it c again, as we understand that all that c signifies is an arbitrary constant. And so finally, the curves are given by the equation y equals some multiple of x, where c can be any real number, and of course we know that this is simply the set of infinitely many lines passing through the origin, whose slope is c. And now, we have confirmation, as we did in the previous video. So if the first family consists of all circles centered about the origin, then the orthogonal family of curves to this first family must be the lines passing through the origin. And that's it. Now again, why this was not redundant and interesting is that we used, in the first family of curves, implicit differentiation to find the derivative for our first family of curves, keeping in mind that, even though sometimes you might be tempted to use a shortcut, by isolating y in terms of x, in some cases, for more complicated curves, you may not be able to isolate y as a function of x, and then you have to use implicit differentiation. And that's it.